Many commercial and residential properties don't have enough water pressure to run the lawn sprinkler system properly. This could be because the city's static water pressure is too low or because the water has to travel too great a distance. It can also be because the system's running off of a well or an above ground storage tank. Whatever the situation is, it causes low pressure. We can overcome that by adding a booster pump in line and increase the water pressure. This is an inline booster pump. It basically has two components. The first part of the pump is called the motor end. The motor comes in one half horsepower up to 10 or 15 horsepower depending on how large the irrigation system is. Typically the voltage used for this kind of pump is going to be a 120 volt or 240 volt motor, sometimes both. The other part of the pump is called the wet end. This is where the impeller is. As the water comes in from the city supply or the well or the storage tank, the water is boosted by the impeller and it comes out the discharge side and onto the lawn sprinkler system so it can operate properly. This particular commercial property is 80 acres and has over 200 irrigation zones. Because of the large expansion over the last several years, we've had to add an inline constant pressure booster pump. The water comes from the city at about 40 psi. It goes through the pump and it comes out at about 80 psi to make sure the lawn sprinklers operate properly. This system turns on and off by utilizing a pressure tank and a pressure switch. As water is being used in the field, the pressure in the tank drops to 60 psi and turns the pump on. Now, we want to be sure that the system has constant pressure throughout the entire irrigation cycle. So we've added a pressure regulating valve that holds the pressure at 70 psi. Now, when the last zone turns off, the pressure tank begins to fill back up again, and once it gets to 80 psi, the pressure switch turns the pump off. Some commercial properties with large irrigation systems might want more sophistication and automation in their pump control. We can do this by adding a VFD, or also known as a variable frequency drive system. The VFD can be programmed to be sure the pump shuts down in case of high flow, low flow, high pressure, or low pressure. It also can be programmed to maintain a constant pressure while all the irrigation zones are running. A commercial property like this one could use over a million gallons of water per year just for landscape irrigation. And because of the rising cost of municipal water, a lot of clients have decided to get their water from a lake, a pond, or underground storage tank by using a suction lift centrifugal pump like this one. This is a self-priming suction lift pump. It has a motor end and a pump end, also known as the wet end. As the motor spins, the pump creates a vacuum, allowing atmospheric pressure to push water into the pump. The water comes through a filtered foot valve, which is underwater. It goes through the suction line, into the pump, becomes pressurized. It goes through the filter and onto the landscape irrigation system. It's important to note that every pump should be primed before it's turned on for the first time. And you should never run a pump when it's dry to avoid damage to the pump itself. This is a self-priming pump, which means in the event that the suction line loses water, this pump can lift more water to take its place. We can tell this is a self-priming pump because the intake of the pump is above the impeller, which is always underwater. And because it's underwater, it can create a vacuum, allowing atmospheric pressure to push water into the pump. Every above ground pump has a limitation on how high and how far it can lift water. Whatever pump you install, make sure it is as close to the water as possible with only a few feet of lift, and make sure you keep it out of the flood zone. An above ground centrifugal suction lift pump is great in most applications. However, for this property, we chose a submersible booster pump for two primary reasons. The first reason is the homeowner didn't want to see the pump, so by putting it in the water, we can keep it out of sight. Secondly, we have to push the water all the way to the top of this hill and to the back of the property, so we needed more pressure. This is a submersible booster pump. It basically has three components to it. The motor here on the bottom, the intake screen right here in the middle, and the pump itself right here on top. The submersible booster pump is set in a PVC well casing with filters at the bottom and a well seal on top. Water comes through the screens to filter out debris, then passes over the motor to help keep it cool. It then enters the pump through the intake screen, becomes pressurized by the impellers, and exits through the discharge pipe. The pump and discharge pipe are held in place by the well seal. This submersible booster pump is now ready to be installed in the pond. All we need to do now is hook the discharge piping to the irrigation main line and the pump motor to electricity. 
As you can see, there are many applications for pumps when it comes to landscape irrigation. To find out more, sign up for one of our education classes, stop by your local Ewing branch, or visit us online at ewingirrigation.com.